Hey guys, this is Fergie with Media Unlocked. Um, we got an idea for a slider from Film Riot, so we kind of improved upon it, and this is a finished product. Um, we're going to go through step by step, show you how to build it, how much it costs. It's very simple, so anybody can do it at home. First off, I'm going to go through the tools you need for this. It's pretty simple. Um, you need a Phillips head screwdriver to match whatever bolt you get. You need a wrench. Um, we're using a 7 16 wrench because it fits the nut that we're using. Um, an adjustable wrench will work just fine here. You also need a drill bit big enough, same diameter as whatever bolt you get. This is a quarter 20 bolt. Um, and you might need a drill to drive in um, the wood screws later and a tape measure and that's it. Um, now we're gonna go through all the parts you need. Um, let's see, first up we have a quarter 20 nut quarter 20 bolt. You can get whatever length you like. Two inches is probably perfect. I think this is about an inch and a half. It was a little tight. You need a wing nut that's also quarter 20. Um, you need eight by three quarter wood screws. Um, the plywood that we used was just a scrap piece of wood. It's three quarter inch. It's um, any wood will work. If you had a two by four that would work. The three-quarter inch works really good though because it lowers the profile of the slider and so it's not a little top heavy. Um, you also need caster wheels just for furniture. They don't have to be the high weight. I think these were 75 pounds which is way more than we'll ever need. You also need bumpers so you don't scratch up your table. You need two electric boxes. Um, make sure you get the kind that have the punch outs in the back. These little pieces right here will pop right out. Just make sure you got two on the back side. You also need four set screw connectors and the screw to go on top of it. It's just a lock nut. And then the main component for the build is two five-foot pieces of electrical conduit. Um, they're going to be in the electrical section. Um, all of the, uh, the electric boxes, the set screw connectors and nuts are all in the electrical section. Um, all of the set screws are in the furniture hardware section and these are just with hardware as well. They're just wood screws. All right, the first part we're going to assemble is the actual rail itself. The main components are three-quarter inch electrical conduit. Uh, these are metal. Um, you don't want to go with plastic, the PVC or anything because they're going to flex. Um, this is a five foot length. Just make sure you get two pipes that are the exact same length. Um, if you have to cut them, you can use a pipe cutter or a hacksaw. Um, make sure to use a metal blade on your hacksaw. Um, first thing you need to put on are these set screw connectors. You put them right in the back of the electric box. See these little holes on the side here? You just punch them out with the screwdriver, hammer, whatever you got. Just punch them right out and be careful not to cut yourself on the sharp metal there. You just push these through like this. You take these little lock nuts. There's a concave side. Make sure that's down towards the box. It's kind of tricky. It's a little tight spot, but all you do is turn them in there as best you can and then twist the actual set screw connector to lock it in because the uh, since you put it concave side down it's going to lock into the box and you do that again like I said they're a little tricky because it's a tight spot but that's what you want it to look like there. And then next you can go ahead and put your bumpers on. I like to put the screws down. You just put one bumper on each side. And this just keeps the little metal box from scratching up the nice wood table or whatever you're going to sit it on later. Once you get to that point, just pop it on the end of your rails. And with your Phillips head screwdriver I told you to get earlier, you just sit it on there so they're seat it all the way down in there. You tighten them up.
And that's it. You obviously repeat the whole step on the other end. This one's already been done for you. But that's the whole rail right there. Now we're on to building the actual cart itself. Um, depending on which electric box you picked in Lowe's or whatever you know home improvement store you went to, they might be a little bit different. There's little, little variations. So on this one, you need to just measure your distance on your pipes. Um, you just measure how far apart they are from center of pipe to center of pipe. Um, that's about two and a half. So then you got to think about how big your camera is. We're using the Canon Rebel Series cameras, so it's got a fairly good size base. So you probably want to compensate for about four inches here. See how you got a little overhang on both sides? That's probably perfect. You got to think about later when you put these caster wheels on, they stick out past the edge a little bit, so it's got to be at least wider than that. And see how there's room to get two wheels on here? Four inches worked about perfect for us, but like I said, you might have to adjust for the width on your pipes. Um, also, the length we chose four by eight because the camera is about five to six inches with you know all the gear on it. Um, that gives you enough room to get underneath it and spin the camera actually to put it on. Um, if you don't have a big enough base, it's going to be top heavy because it has to counterbalance itself because the lens hangs off one side. All right, and to actually set your locations for your wheels, center this up on the poles as best you can, and just draw a line right here in the center of this pole, a line right here in the center of this pole, and the same on this side. That's just going to give you a center location for these wheels. It's not very important how far back or forward they are. Obviously, the wider the base, the more stable it's going to be. And then the center stud on this wheel, you line up with that line right there. You don't have to mark holes here for your screws or anything. They're just simple wood screws that go in pretty easy. Your actual mount for the camera that this is going to go through, I just measured, it's, we know it's 8 inches long, so I measured 4 inches over. Um, we first started here and found out really quick that if it's in the center of the plate, it tries to lean this way because the lens was heavier on this side. So we set it off. Actually, I'll turn it around so you can see what I'm talking about. This is where the actual camera would be located on this stud. The lens is out here. It falls forward and it won't balance itself. So we're probably about half an inch away from the edge. And as long as it's anywhere on the four inch line from this end, you'll be good. Now, just to save some time, I went ahead and put some of the wheels on the cart. Um, I'm going to show you guys how to do it. There's a little process to it. Um, first off, we're going to go ahead and put our camera mounting screw in. Take your washer, which I forgot to tell you earlier because I was using it as a place marker. Put it through the back. This one's actually um, a little tight fitting because um, the drill bit we used wasn't very big, but I kind of wanted a tighter fit, so I have to thread this in. It just helps sturdy up the, uh, the mount because this is the only thing that's touching the camera. On this side, take the wrench from earlier, go ahead and start the nut. Just hold the nut in place over here and tighten it down. You don't have to go too crazy because this is just particle board. You can really pull right through it. That's probably good enough. Just snug. And you put the wing nut on upside down, just like that. And then to actually put the wheels on, Remember our lines that we made here earlier? Just take the stud right here of the wheel and make sure it's lined up with that. Other than that, it's not really too important how far forward or back it is. Um, just try and make it e you know, do the same thing on each side. And these are wood screws, so they go in pretty easy. This one's already been pre-marked. I put it together. I just took it back apart to show you guys how I did it. Um, if you notice, I pulled the wheel, see how they rotate? I pulled it back, so the short side's here because it's an offset wheel. And then when I flip it around, I got room to do it here.
two screws for each wheel should be plenty. Um, this isn't really high weight. Um, try not to really torque these down because like I said earlier, the plywood is fairly brittle and you can strip out the threads really quick. And like I said earlier, it's a really simple build. That's the whole cart right there. Right, we got the whole thing put together here. We've already got the camera on the cart. It's pretty simple to put it on. You just spin the camera get the lens faced where you want and then you back the wing nut up to the camera to lock it in place if you wanted to tilt it this way or that way. Um, like I was telling you earlier I had to offset the camera back instead of the center of the cart. You can see why now because the lens face is off, you know, hangs off pretty far. Um, we came up with some other ideas just to make it neater. With this short, the five foot rail, um, it works pretty good the way it is but if you actually had a long rail where you had to take a step as you were moving the cart, you couldn't really do that steadily. So we were thinking take a, ra a reel from a fishing rod, attach it down to this end with an eye hook right here, and you could just reel it in as far as you want, um, as fast as you want, it'd be pretty smooth. Um, you're going to try this out a couple times. Uh, in some of our test shoots we had an issue with a little bit of a wobble. Our spacing was a tiny bit off with the wheels. Um, but the good thing about the plywood is it's pretty forgiving. You can just adjust the wheel a little bit and retighten it up. Um, might take a little bit of fidgeting, but on the second try we got it perfect. Um, that's really it. It's pretty simple. Um, the only other thing you might want to do is if you wanted to paint it, make sure you go with a high temp paint. Like this is a high heat for a grill. Um, just because in a car, especially since it's metal, it's going to melt the paint off of it. And if you all stick Stay tuned till afterwards. We're going to do some test shots with it and show you what it looks like. Well, thanks for tuning in, guys. We're just uh, finishing up some paint here. Um, that's the rest of the build. Um, I said paint was optional. You know, it works fine without it, but it might smooth up the thing just a little bit more. Just be sure before you paint it to clean it down with just a damp rag or maybe some solvent, odorless mineral spirit, something like that, because um, it comes with some oil and stuff from packaging. Um, but yeah, we'd, we'd love to see some pictures of your all's builds, you know, how, if you guys try this, I want to see how it turns out. Um, you can leave some pictures on Facebook at David D. Images, or you can follow us on Twitter at uh, Media Unlocked. Um, you know, thanks for tuning in, guys. Take it easy.